In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Exodus desktop wallet, and we'll go through a full beginner's guide, explaining how to restore or create a new wallet, how to send and receive funds, connect up a Trezor hardware wallet, and connect to popular apps from right inside your wallet. For more information on Exodus, please check out everybithelps.co.uk. The Exodus wallet, which launched in 2015, is a free software crypto wallet for desktop and for mobile. It's incredibly easy to use, and it gives users the ability to send, receive, and exchange Bitcoin and more than 150 different cryptocurrencies. In fact, Investopedia have stated that it's the best Bitcoin wallet for beginners. With Exodus, you'll also have complete control over your crypto with access to your private keys. Plus, you can also manage your crypto in Exodus securely from your Trezor hardware wallet and access apps such as Compound Finance, FTX Exchange. Plus, there's also ways that you can stake your crypto and earn interest from it. If you've not already downloaded the Exodus wallet, you can do so from their website, where it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux, as well as their mobile apps from App Store and Google Play. In this tutorial, we're going to be demonstrating the desktop wallet, but I also do have a mobile tutorial available. So let's jump in. And once you've downloaded and installed Exodus, you'll be prompted to either make your first deposit or you can restore from a backup. I'm going to be restoring from a backup, and you may be doing this if you have a new laptop, for example. However, if you are creating a new wallet, you can skip this part and go to the next part, which is all around passwords. If you're restoring from a backup, you'll be prompted to enter your secret recovery phrase, which is the 12 words that you're provided with for your wallet. For those of you that aren't aware of what these are, we're going to discuss these in a moment. Now, although the wallet that I'm restoring from only has limited funds in it, I'm just going to go away and enter in these words now. If you're creating a new wallet or restoring from a backup, it's really important to create a strong, secure password. You'll also need to ensure that you remember this and you don't write it down. The password can't be recovered either, so write something down unique here and choose next. Now, if this is a new wallet and you haven't been prompted to enter a password or write down the secret recovery phrase, which is what we're going to be doing next, I'm going to show you how to access these shortly. And you'll need to memorize your password too, and then confirm the password that you've just created. You'll then be prompted with your 12 words. Now, these 12 words are the key to your crypto. Therefore, it's important that they're kept safe and so that no one else can see them. If anyone were to get hold of these words, they will be able to restore as I've just done and they'll have complete control of your crypto. I would also recommend keeping these somewhere really safe and possibly consider splitting them up into different locations. Also, don't name what they are. For example, what I mean by this is don't write down a bit of paper and then name them Exodus private keys. Once you've written down all the words, you'll then be asked to select which word is in your paper backup and then finish. So now my wallet is restored or yours may be newly created and you can see my crypto balance appearing. You'll also see some icons at the top of the screen on a static bar for your portfolio, wallet, exchange and then some apps too. Before we take a look at each of these in depth, I'd like to take us to our settings, which is the cog icon on the right. As one of the first things that I usually do with a new wallet or crypto platform is try and secure it. Now, I do find that one of the major downfalls to Exodus is its security, as there is no two-factor authentication available for the wallet. However, if we head across to the security tab, from here you can set up an auto lock feature after a specific period of time, which may help if you walk away from your computer. Or you can also manually lock your wallet from the top of the screen using the padlock option. Then if we click onto backup, if this was a new account, this is where you would also be prompted to enter in a password or back up your secure recovery phrase. And this is where you can view your secret recovery phrase, which is also known as your backup phrase or your private keys. Whilst we're in the settings, if you want to change your currency, for example, you can do that from the personalized tab. But let's head across to the home screen now so that I can show you around. And you can access the home screen at any time by clicking onto the X icon beside the word Exodus in the top left-hand side of the screen. The Home button takes you to the portfolio screen, which will tell you your balance and how many assets this is split between. You can hover over segments of the chart to see your individual balances. 
Then it will show you some stats, such as the 24-hour change of your portfolio, the highest balance, portfolio age, the best 24-hour asset, and worst. You'll then see a list of your assets, and these are currently those that have an active balance. Showing the current price, 24-hour change, trend, balance, your value, and percentage of your portfolio. And you can add more tokens to this list too. We can also untick the box stating with balance and view a much wider range of tokens so that we can do things such as tracking their price. In our portfolio at the top of the screen here, you'll see that we're on the overview tab. And you can also view tabs for price action and portfolio, which provide you with further details about each crypto. When you click onto each token, you'll reach the wallet, which you can see at the top of the screen now has the blue line underneath, indicating that that's the screen you're currently on. Each crypto will have its own wallet, where you can sometimes transfer funds. Then you can send, receive, and exchange your crypto. Plus, you can view your activity, which is a list of all your transactions associated to that crypto. When you click onto these, you can then view further detail, such as the date that that transaction was sent, the ID of where you've sent it to, the price now, and the price on the day that you perform the transaction. You can also view information about each crypto with a brief description under About, any related videos, and blogs. Now if we head back to our portfolio, and choose Bitcoin, you'll see here that there is no option to buy crypto from here. The reason is that this is a wallet for storing your crypto, as opposed to buying it, which is what is usually done on an exchange such as the likes of Coinbase, Binance or FTX. If you are looking for places to buy, you can check out my videos and promotional sign-up links in the description under Exchanges, or alternatively, under my Compare Exchanges page on my website, everabethelps.co.uk. You'll also see that I have some advanced options appearing on the right, and these can be removed under your Personalised tab, where we could change the currencies. If you want to send your crypto outside of the Exodus wallet to another platform such as an exchange, another wallet, or a lending platform, Click on to send. You'll then need to enter in the address or scan the QR code for the cryptocurrency that you are sending. And this is a string of letters and numbers. This might be your receive address over on the likes of a wallet or a deposit address on a platform. Just make sure though that if you are sending Bitcoin that you've entered a Bitcoin address in the to field. If for example, you send Bitcoin to an Ethereum address, you will risk losing your crypto. One of the easiest ways to input the address is by scanning the QR code, if this is possible for you. If you are copying and pasting an address, or scanning a QR code, it is still worth double checking the beginning, middle and end of the address here too, just to make sure that it's accurate, you haven't missed any characters, or that it's been entered in correctly. With crypto, transactions are non-retractable, so sometimes if you are feeling a little bit nervous, even send a test amount first before you send all of your crypto. You can then enter in the amount that you'd like to send, and underneath you'll then see the Bitcoin network fee that will be charged for sending your crypto. In the world of crypto, when you send transactions on any blockchain, you will need to pay fees for that to be processed by the miners, and the price that you will pay will depend on the blockchain that you're sending that on. As you can see, for me that's going to be about 55 cents. However, with Exodus, these network fees can be adjusted by using the slider, which you can edit for your transaction to go through faster or slower for cheaper transactions. Just make sure that you don't do them too slow as they can sometimes fail. Once you've chosen to send, your funds will then be sent to their destination. If you want to receive funds or send crypto to your Exodus wallet, click on to receive. You'll then be presented with a QR code that you can scan using a mobile device or in the same way as you sent your crypto, you've got an option of a Bitcoin address to send your funds to. You'll also need to make sure that you've selected the correct type of crypto for the crypto you're sending into Exodus. Again, if for example, you send Ethereum to a Bitcoin address, you will risk losing your crypto. And you can simply copy this address or use the QR code to send to this address from your external wallet or platform. If you're copying an address, again, please double check the first, middle and last characters and possibly send a test amount first. I'm going to go ahead now and send roughly $10 of Bitcoin to this account. Once it's been received, you'll then see the new asset appearing in your portfolio at the top of the screen, and also underneath showing the value and percentage of your portfolio. So that was your portfolio and your wallet. 
you then have the option to exchange, where you can exchange from one cryptocurrency to another. Before you start using the exchange, you'll need to check the box to state that you understand that the exchange services are available through a third-party API providers. You'll then reach the exchange screen. So if you wanted to try your hand at another cryptocurrency, you can do this directly from within Exodus Wallet, and it will then be safely stored in your wallet. Due to this convenience, this won't be the cheapest way to swap or exchange your crypto, as you're going to be dictated to in terms of the crypto prices. They also include something that's known as a spread, and the fees are built into the price that you see here. You will find far cheaper prices on exchanges such as Binance or FTX. However, you also need to send your crypto outside of Exodus to do so, which will incur network fees. However, there will also be network fees for this. And there's a host of different cryptos that you can swap from and to. What I'll do next is show you how to connect to Trezor hardware wallet before we get into all the different apps and integrations. Connecting up a Trezor hardware wallet is a great way to manage those funds. This was particularly helpful before the Trezor suite was released, as it was a simple way to manage your funds and it still remains to be, as you don't have to install two apps or learn them. I personally still use Exodus to manage my Trezor as opposed to the Trezor suite. To pair your Trezor device, this can be done under your settings in the top right. Then if you choose devices. From here you have the option to install the Trezor bridge which allows you to pair your Trezor device. So let's click on to install now. If you don't already have a Trezor hardware device and you'd like to get one, then I've got a promotional sign up link in the summary below. Once you've clicked on to install now, you may be prompted and taken to the Trezor suite, which I was, but I couldn't actually find where to download the Trezor bridge. So I personally found the direct link and used that instead, which again I'll link below. You'll then need to download the Trezor bridge and follow the install instructions according to your operating system. You'll then be prompted to pair your Trezor with Exodus, where you can then choose to connect. And this stage may take a few minutes to pair. Once paired, it will then let you know all the assets that it's successfully paired. And you'll see your Trezor portfolio appearing from the portfolio screen, where you can then interact and manage with the funds that are stored on your Trezor. As I mentioned, Exodus has a lot of features, apps and integrations, which you can reach under Settings and Apps. One of their latest approved apps is with FTX Exchange. So if you have an FTX account, you can exchange your assets directly within Exodus. And not only that, but you can also manage your FTX portfolio and transfer funds all within your Exodus wallet. To start using this integration, first you'll need to install. Then enter in your login details. Now, for some reason, I had an issue here, which I managed to resolve using Use FTX website underneath Forgot Password. I was then prompted to log in my information again and then authorise the connection. Once you've authorised the connection, the account will then be linked to Exodus. And you can exchange your crypto using FTX, which gives you a simple swap from one crypto to another, which you can do at much lower fees. Plus, you can change some of your FTX settings in terms of security from here too. When you've integrated with FTX, you'll also find that the FTX exchange and also the FTX app balances will then appear under your portfolio. If we head to wallets now and choose Bitcoin in this example, you can also easily transfer your funds to and from your FTX account to Exodus and vice versa. However, because a transaction will be made on the blockchain, this will come with a fee. From the drop down is where you can choose where you'd like to transfer your funds from and to, and you can enter in the amount, choose your speed for the fee, and then transfer. And under transfer is where you can also send your funds to and from your Trezor too. Next, we're going to take a look at rewards, which is another app where you can earn interest on your crypto through staking. With rewards, you can deposit the likes of Solana, Cardano, and Cosmos. And if we click on to calculate profit, and select Atom as I saw that had some of the best rates here. We can then see if we were to deposit 500 for 12 months, my interest would be at 13.95% and I'd make around $2,000 a year, which is great for crypto that could potentially be sitting idle in a wallet otherwise. Again, all these apps can be found under your settings and apps. Next, we have Compound Finance. This is where you can only deposit DAI and it will show you the rate of interest. 
again, you can use the calculator to see what your profit amount will be. And I've also got a full tutorial for Compound available if you want to find out more about them or deposit more varied tokens or coins. So let's take a look at a couple more apps. And these include the likes of Sportex, which I've got a separate tutorial for, which allows you to bet on sports and esports with a die balance in Exodus. Plus there's NFTs, where you can receive, store, display and share your NFTs that are on the Solana blockchain. Therefore, you will need to have a small amount of soul to pay for the transaction fees to send NFTs in and out of your gallery. Then there's Exodus Shares, where Exodus customers can now reserve interest to participate in their IPO or initial public offering. So as you can see, Exodus are really trying to integrate a lot of features so that users don't have to leave the comfort of their wallet to access some of these apps. And this can really help to simplify some of these otherwise slightly more complicated platforms. These features are also available on mobile too. If you want to sync up your device, this is also under your settings and then devices. And you can choose to sync, where you'll then be prompted to scan a QR code using your mobile app. And again, I've got a separate tutorial for the mobile app as it really needed its own tutorial. Now, in terms of support, this is where you can check that you're running the latest version of their software, although you will be prompted to update when new versions become available. There's also a help desk linked to their Twitter and email support, and I've personally used the Exodus support a couple of times. And unlike a lot of other platforms, I did find them really helpful and they did give a prompt response. But that completes my beginner's guide to the Exodus wallet. And I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to my website at everabithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.